Hey guys, my name is Nathan Garber, otherwise known as Jubster on Instagram, and today I'll be teaching you my method of staggered fuse claptons. If you guys don't know what staggered fuse claptons are, it is a core wire with a smaller gauged wire wrapped around it, spaced. Two or more of those core wires with the staggered wraps around them and fusing them all together between those wraps to create a flat, wide, multi-core build that is very intricate, produces a lot of flavor and vapor, and it's my favorite coil to date. The way I learned this build is from watching people on Instagram, YouTube. The method that I'm using is from a guy named Justin Trial. Um, I will put a link to his video down in the description. Um, it helped me a lot and I still use sort of the technique that he uses. So the list of things that you're going to need are wire, of course, um, a core wire and a wrap wire. You're going to need a vise or something to keep stable your swivel setup. So I have three swivels in a line here and a hook to wrap my wire around and the vise is just to stable it and I have it screwed down over on the edge of my desk here. The next thing you'll need are toothless pliers. This is not a necessity for this build. Um, I, I use it to straighten the wire, although I do straighten it on the drill and I will show you in uh, some close-ups in a little bit. Um, it's just good to have anyway. Toothless pliers are cheap. You can get them at Harbor Freight for a buck um, and they don't need to be the highest of quality as long as they're toothless. The next thing you'll need are nylon pliers. So these nylon pliers I got from an arts and crafts store, eight bucks, can't beat it. I got two sets, but these are a necessity when building this coil. You'll use them to flatten the build out when it bunches up after the tension that you're putting on it with the fuse wire. The next thing you'll need are any type of cutters. I have two here, you don't have to have two, one is fine, but any type of cutters will do. Another thing you'll need is a pair of scissors, um, only if your cutters aren't sharp enough. Next thing is something to wrap your wire around when you're finishing the buildup. The next thing you'll need, and one of the most important things, are some of these clips. Some clamps work for other people. These clips have worked perfectly for me. Um, I will go over them more on where you can get them and what you need to do to modify them um, to make this build easier for you. And I'll talk about this straw as well and tell you what its purpose is. Another thing you'll need, you don't need it but it's helpful, is either a magnifying lens, a jeweler's loop, or one of these cell phone lenses. Um, I use it for the macro feature and I'll let you know as well later in the video what this is used for. And last but not least, what you'll need to finish this build is a drill. I have two here. The first drill here is the fast drill that I have. It goes 3000 RPMs. I got it at Harbor Freight and it's used for the initial Clapton. The second drill here is a slower drill. It has a high speed of 1200 RPM. It's what I use to do all of the other intricate building and fusing. So this green clip. I got this green clip from my local Walgreens off of a balloon. Some Walgreens don't have balloons, so you might have to just find a clip that looks like it. I cut this V-shape out of the top of it so that when I'm staggering that round wire initially, it can feed onto it perfectly perpendicular and not mess up. When I clamp this clip onto the wire, I have this blue tape on the inside so it doesn't ruin the clip, and it cuts little grooves in the tape so that it has a guide to Clapton perfectly and consistently throughout the whole wire. This blue clip I got, it's the same clip from before, but what I do with this clip is I have this straw that I got from just a fast food joint. I put the straw in the clip and I put the clip in my vise. The straw is sturdy and stable and I put my cores inside of the straw so I don't have to use a swivel. It keeps the tension tight and I can have the cores with the stagger on it loose so that nothing is binding and 
everything fuses perfectly. All the supplies and tools that I've gone over in this video, I will have links as best as I can in the description for where you can get all this stuff. So without further ado, I will start this build. I'll get some close-up shots of what you'll need to do and how I position everything and start off everything. Um, it's a complicated build. It's going to take a while if you're just starting out. Um, but sooner or later, you're going to get a method. It might not be this one, um, but you'll find a method and, and this build will just come easy to you. It still does take me a while to do these builds, but it's a lot easier than when I first started. So let's get to it. So we'll start to build off with a piece of 28 gauge wire. I'll put a little 90 degree bend in it and you'll see what that's used for in a second. I'll stretch it all the way down my desk until I get to my swivels. On my swivels I'll secure it by twisting it so that there's hardly any slack. I'll then hold the hook that's holding the wire. I'll run the drill for about four or five seconds. It'll straighten that wire out so that there are no kinks. I'll then grab about a four inch piece of my wrap wire, cut it off. Then with that little 90 degree bend, I'll attach that little piece of wire to it so that it has a stable point. I'll then clapton it onto that round wire to get it started. I'll take a piece of wrap wire that is still on the spool, attach it just like I did that little four inch piece. Once I get those two wires running parallel to each other, I'll start to clapton them as tight as I can together. This is called parallel claptoning. I'll do this for about an inch. Then I'll take that green clip and I'll clamp on top of that parallel clapton piece that's around the core wire. I'll pinch the tip of the clip to make an imprint on that blue piece of tape on the inside. And you can see the V that I cut out has those two wires exiting right in the center. That tiny piece of the four inch wire that I had parallel clapped in, I will cut that off with a pair of sharp scissors so that when I clapped in holding the spool, that little four inch piece will run out and it'll leave a gap. That gap will stagger the wrap wire perfectly on the core wires. This is where I usually look at it through that phone lens just to make sure that the staggers are very even, nothing's overlapping, and everything looks perfect. I usually do one length of core wire so that I have perfect consistency throughout that one piece. When I finish, I'll clip that little wire that was coming from the top of that clip. And when I release the clip from the core wire, that outside staggered thin wire will recoil. You want it to actually do that in order for it to be loose on the cores. So what I'll do is I'll grab that little tail wire and I'll reverse the drill again for about three or four seconds. 
you want it loose on the cores so that when you are fusing it, if there's any imperfections, the wire will adjust accordingly and end up correcting any mistakes you might have had initially claptoning the wire. I'll then cut what is about seven inches of wire four times to get the total amount of cores I'm trying to achieve. Then I will take those four cores, put them in between my fingers, go all the way to the end, and I'll take a tiny piece of the wrap wire, secure it between my fingers, and wrap those four wires up just about an eighth of an inch of the end of the wires. You're gonna wanna have the core wires as centered as possible in this drill so that when you're fusing it all together, it's not flopping up and down and making each fuse uneven. Overall, it just makes for a better fusing experience if it's very centered. So I'll take the swivel out of my vise and put in that clip straw combo. I'll use the scissors to cut the ends of those core wires so that the staggered portions can slide off and allowing for any imperfections to be fixed. Then I'll secure the wires at the check of the drill. I'll start fusing, trying to get every gap, not skipping any gaps and not overlapping. At this point, it's just patience. You just have to fuse with confidence at a 90 degree angle. And at about every four to 10 fuses, you're gonna to wanna to crimp your cores with your nylon pliers. I put blue tape on the inside of my nylon pliers because after you use your nylon pliers for a while, it starts to become chingered on the inside, which ends up leaving little pieces of nylon inside your wire, and you don't want that. I'm gonna speed up the video now because fusing is a long process, very tedious. So while fusing, everything will be going well, and this part is definitely worth mentioning. So right here, I had my fuse angle completely wrong, and it backed over itself. There are a few things you can do to correct a problem. You can back up and just try to refuse it again. Sometimes that works, but on something a, a wide of build like this, the fuses become kind of ugly looking. You can back up and a method I've used down to 40 gauge, no thinner. You can run your finger up the wire, straighten it with your fingernail, run back over the fuses, and it's like nothing ever happened. So 
So once you get to the end, you'll find that the staggered portions of wire on the core are loose at the end and you'll run out of the core. Flip that little wire, take it out of the straw and give a big sigh of relief that you're done with the most tedious part. This next part's a bit tricky. While you're fusing, since you don't have it on a swivel, it's gonna twist and grabbing it while reversing the drill will straighten it out. I usually run it over one more time with the nylon pliers, just making sure everything is laying flat in the grooves. After you do that, you can grab your coil jig tool and begin wrapping your coils. This is basically just a building guide. You can wrap your coils however you'd like. Everyone wraps their coils differently. This is just how I wrap mine. I'm giving this wire five wraps on top of a three millimeter screwdriver. I have about seven inches of wire, which will yield me way more than enough for two five wraps. So here are your finished coils. You did it. You made it to the end. Good job. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope it helped a lot. Um, there's many, many ways of how to do this build. Um, Squid Dude has some on his channel. Um, Twisted Messes has some. Um, like I said before, Justin Trial, Trial and Vape, he has a video that's good on it. Uh, Ownboy Josh has a video on how to stagger wire. There's many videos out there. Whatever works for you is going to be the way that you can do this build the easiest. If you have any questions or concerns, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. I'll try my best to get back to you. Have fun, keep vaping, and keep building.